Have you got an algae issue that just doesn't seem to go away whatever you do? Well, I've got five tips I'm going to share with you that might just help. I'm Rob and I've been keeping the reef aquarium for a few years now. In this time, I've had to deal with a fair few different algae issues. I know how disheartening it can be, so I want to share with you my experiences to try and help you out. So without further ado, let's dive in. Tip number one is you're going to have to have some patience. I know you might feel like it's cheating for me to say this, but it's really important to have realistic expectations when you are tackling algae. Most of the time, it can take quite a few months to get on top of algae issues, especially if you want to do it in a steady way so that it doesn't impact the rest of your tank. And this can feel very frustrating, especially when the algae itself can feel like it turned up in only a few days. Number two is accepting you won't get rid of all of the algae. At the end of the day, algae is a living thing and it needs a certain environment to grow. And if we are going to try and make that environment so that algae won't grow, then there's a good chance that you're also going to stop some of the other desirable things growing, like corals, for example. So... My personal belief is that a healthy system has a small amount of algae, but the key to it is keeping it in balance. So if you are trying to remove every tiny piece of algae from your system, then I think that's going to be difficult. Number three is herbivores. So in the wild, algae on the reefs is kept in check by a wide range of algae grazers constantly munching down on all of that algae. In our tanks, we can go a small way to replicate in that by stocking our tanks with a number of critters and fish that do just that. In my tank, I have a bunch of different snails, a red spotted fly blenny, and most of all, important of all, a bristletooth tang. These guys all help by grazing on that algae, usually when it's very, very short so that it doesn't get chance to take hold and take over. It's important to remember not to overstock your tank though and give it chance for the animals you've added to, um, to get to work. If you do add too many, then once the algae does start to get eaten up, then unfortunately these animals are going to starve. Number four, manual removal. This is good old fashioned elbow grease. So I know I said it's good to try and keep it natural by using herbivores and be patient, but sometimes we do just need to help things along a little bit. At first, I don't use any kind of special tools to remove the algae. I just remove this with my fingers, but it does depend on the type of algae you've got. And you might want to use gloves just to protect yourself a little bit here. After that, I then usually move on to a toothbrush. Again, depends on the type of algae. Just remember to use a dedicated toothbrush for the tank or you might get yourself in a spot of bother and probably make yourself rather ill. Number five, chemical treatment. For me, chemical treatment is not something I want to jump to quickly, but when the other options have failed and you've given it quite a few months to give them chance to work, sometimes chemical treatment can work quite well. I had a big bubble algae issue and after a long and steady treatment of Vibrant, this cleared up completely, probably after around six months or so. These treatments can cause other issues though, so aren't without risk. Have you got any other tips for how you deal with algae? Leave a comment and let me know. Right guys, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, leave a like and consider checking out some of my other content. If you've already watched a few videos now and you're enjoying it, then perhaps consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time on Indoor Reef, keep it stable, keep it fun and keep reefing.